Today's Dungeon Crawl features some amazing people, Wally DM, J&J Tabletop, Steely Sam, and Goobertown Hobbies. Make sure you check out their links in the description below. The remote northern city of Davern's Rush was a thriving community 50 years ago. 49 years ago, there was an attempt to create a magical training ground for future champions. No one has heard anything from the city since that time. Everybody give me a constitution saving throw. That's a great way to start. Yeah, this this is what I signed up for right Oof. here. Oh yeah. Okay. Well. Logu, Ovark, and Rogar wake up on the floor. You hear snoring nearby. There's a, a dim light coming from two locations. It seems further down the hallway there's a light shining through an irregular portal. And up above, about 200 feet above, you can see a massive hole. Circular. And as you kind of listen, you can hear weird noises from up above. But you were at the bottom of this massive hole with a hallway leading out. But there doesn't seem to be any stairs or anything to go to the top of the hall. So basically, you're at the bottom of a hole. You see a tunnel moving to the north. There's an ominous creak once again from above. This is a predicament. Um, we have one person sleeping in here. You see one person sleeping. Upon, upon uh, the ground. Italy, go over and try to wake him up. Uh, Kyle, why don't you give me another constitution saving throw? Go. Got the same roll again. That's a 6 plus 4 for 10. All right, still unconscious. Uh, as you move him, you hear something from above, and you hear a voice uh, ring out. It says, you, Thank you so much. We, we all very much appreciate this. Can we tell if this voice is, like, speaking to us? Or it just feels like it's just out there? It's coming from the top of the, the circular pit thing on top. So about 200 feet up. For clarification, do we know where we were prior to this? Or is this just, like, waking up, like... The whole world kind of a thing. As you consider this, it's really hazy. You remember where you were, but you don't you have absolutely no idea how you got here. And do we know each other? You do not. Okay. Looks like we're all in the same predicament. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Ovark. Uh, you are. And well, Rogar stands up. And he's, he's tall. He's six, seven. Uh, he just extends a black scaly hand to Ovark. My name is Rogar. Yes, very nice to meet you. Um, Paul one. Uh, good, good. We can use you, obviously. Uh, and then we'll look over at Logu. Um, you are. And, and Ovark's going to position himself where it's like short and then... Uh, and then medium height, and then tall height, just just for the like stairs. Look at it, and then we've got our sleeping person there too. Sleeping. Yeah. Uh, five more minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, not hard again. No. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's a I'll do more it. creaking I'll do it. noises, uh, and this actually wakes up Kyle from his slumber. This massive creaking uh. noises, which is getting louder and louder. Uh, what was that? Do we have our do we have our stuff? Uh you check your belongings. It seems like you have everything that you normally carry with you. I think we're good to go. Uh creaking sound doesn't sound good. Last time um seen things like this cave in, so maybe not best to stick around. Uh, can, what's in front of us then? You can see that oh. the circular opening two hundred feet above has started to become uh started to close off as this massive rock is starting to be pushed ever slowly across the top of the uh, pit above you. 
Okay. And upwards on the map, what what are those other objects in the room with us? Uh, you glance around uh, in the room. Uh, you can see to the far north is a small barricade made of mostly furniture and planks that closes the room off from the corridor to the north. There's a small hole at the bottom of it, uh, but it's it's pretty small. Uh, you can see that there is a shelf, which seems to have a bunch of items kind of just sort of scattered on it. Uh, and there is just random piles of bric-a-bac, bric-a-brac, debris, all sorts of random stuff. Maybe the remains of furniture, maybe the remains of just random stuff. There's just, you know, it, you look at it and it's just piles of junk with nothing that seems to pop out as anything that's of value. It seems like mostly just sort of random piles of debris. I think Rogar would just take a better or closer look at the shelf to see what's uh, what's going on over there. Uh, you glance at the shelf, and it appears to have a large selection of magical components. Mostly small little glass vials of herbs and common minerals. Uh, small little magician-style stuff. Things that uh, would be required as spell components for various low-level spells. Just play the wizard. Hey, Rogar just like glances over and is just like, if any of you use magic, Kyle, this is good. Kyle picks up a rock and casts light on it and now has a, a glowing rock and, and just kind of starts looking around, surprised at his new companions. You cast just, just light around the room. You are surprised at your new companions momentarily. And then all of a sudden, the spell from the light spell slowly fades into darkness. There's a creaking noise during the brief time when you had light in this room. You could see that the rock above you is covered in hundreds, perhaps thousands, of runes. And you assume there's some sort of anti-magical effect emanating from this mass of rock that is slowly sealing you uh, in. The voice echoes down again. Yes, no, I'm sorry. You, you'll have to stay down there. Ah, you know. It, it is what it is. We, you're, you're really saving us all. Like, I can't be, I can't explain how thankful I am for your sacrifice. No worries, I had the day off. I'll point my, uh, I'll draw my rapier and point it up at him. Uh, release us, captive, captivator. I'm afraid that's, uh, no. I can't, I'm afraid I can't do that. Uh, there has to have the, there has to be four people that go through the uh, four people that go through the tests. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is bunk. Uh, I throw my rock down. It's totally bunk. Yes. Do, you, do any of you know what he is talking about? I have no idea what he's talking. About. Saving you from what? Uh, every two hundredth lunar cycle, uh, the magic has to cycle. So if if the if the if you know the the complex is not activated, then the magic kind of builds up, and it would destroy the entire city and the surrounding area. So it has to be activated. So a group of people have to go through this. Uh, it has to go through this training ground. So best of luck. You better pray these trials take me. Uh, they they probably will. So I'm really you know. Sounds fantastic. I don't remember a damn thing. Um, guess we should get going. That creaking sound is getting worrisome. I think. Um, I I I can't believe I packed this, but I I'm I'm bringing out the ten foot pole to 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 poke around the bramble stuff. Yes. <laughs> ten foot uh, pole is out. Uh, as you do so, you see a skittering noise. As two things happened. The pile of debris that you poke is the one nearest to you, I'm assuming. Yes. So you immediately see two things. There's a skittering noise as some sort of like serpentile shape skitters uh, at the base of the thing and then goes into a hole. And you see what appears to be a uh, arm so suddenly revealed from the pile of debris. 
poke the arm and uh, see if it moves. You poke the arm. Uh, it appears to be desiccated. It's it's covered with leather armor up to the hand, but now that you've kind of poked away the debris a little bit more, you can see that it's definitely several years uh, old corpse. It looks like the ones that did the trial before never made it past this point. That's fantastic news. Um, do you make of this? <laughs> Are they like poking it with a with with a ten foot pole, just like prying it up a little bit so they can see what's going on? As you poke more with a pole, you can see at several points, there's several more. Uh, you can see snakes, which are the same color as the gray ceiling and walls, sort of crawl away from your poking further into the pile. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll talk to the snakes. Ah. Excuse me. Wait, wait there. What? A snake pauses and looks <laughs> back. How do we get out of here? You don't. You were you were horrible. Horrible help. <laughs> Please die quickly so I can eat your soft parts. You do the same. What? No. You I don't you don't eat me, I eat you. That's how this works. I'm gonna eat him. Do you do you want me to show you how this works? Point my rapier at him. He slithers off into the debris, saying. Is- He's no help. I'll look at the party, because I'm assuming they can't understand him. Yeah. He's no help. It's almost as if that snake understood you. That's impressive. Caught its attention for a bit. Well, then, how do we get out of here? How sturdy does this barricade look? Uh, the barricade it looks very makeshift. Uh, like I said, there's a small hole at the bottom, which is about... Two and a half feet by two and a half feet, but it's and mostly underneath just the barricade. Yeah, it's kind of at the bottom of the barricade. Okay, but it seems rather flimsy. How how small? As a matter of fact, I walk up to you. excuse me, dragon person. Um, what are we dealing with here? Ah, uh, you look. Uh, as a gnome, you th- probably think you could actually get through this hole, frankly, pretty easily. I'll I'll get down on my hands and knees and start trying to crawl through it. Yep, you easily are able to do so. Uh, as you go through go out the on area, the and guess it's not going to be the same uh, <laughs> for Rogar. A he hallway left us. He left is us. the same uh, grayish walls. Uh, you know, very wide hallway, thirty feet high, uniform gray brick. You can see two different doors. One to the east, one to the west, and further to the north, you can hear and see um, some weird automaton sort of banging into the wall again and again and again, as if it's walking into the wall. Uh, You can see because it is dimly lit, but certainly well enough lit so you can see uh, everything that's going on here. I'll call through the hole. Hey, don't die in there. It appears safe on this side. Does it look like only, of of all of us, only Logu could fit through that hole? You know, I'm a a fairly small, uh, early teenage boy. Let's give it a try, then. I'm going to look around for for a switch or something on this side. All right. Uh, On these walls. Give me a perception check. Uh, logo. Uh, Fourteen. All right. Uh, you hear more pounding noises, as if there's more creatures the same as this weird mechanical-looking thing. The pounding of, like, metal feet heading towards you. Uh, I'll call back through the hole. I don't want to startle anyone, but <laughs> you better hurry. Did you find a switch or something to get this barricade out of the way? I'm looking. Okay, you you may want to start crawling. I don't. I wouldn't put all of my my halflings in that basket. Uh, you glance around. You can very quickly tell that there's no mechanical switch to this. This is just a barricade that was set up, and it is just constructed. And there is nothing 
There's really nothing to... It's, there's no opening or closing it. Rogar what about you, Dragonborn? Takes, Rogar takes out uh, his Warhammer off his back and he just goes, I have the switch right here. See it. Let's get us through this thing. Just starts bashing it with his Warhammer if he could yeah, try to break it down. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, at that, you <laughs> hear the sound of feet suddenly pick up the pace as the noise suddenly attracts the attention of something. As, <clears> several, <throat> as you can see, several creatures uh, suddenly head to the south in formation. Uh, bash choir! I mean, is is there a way we can get through now, or do, do I have to keep going at this barricade? I, I would say you made enough. You made a big enough hole that you could you could all fit through. Okay. Is is there anti magic here? I'm gonna try and use minor. I'm gonna jump in the corner and use minor illusion to create like to hide myself in debris. Yep. Uh, you can easily do so. Uh, your magic works correctly, and you hear stomping noises as uh it seems like Thank several you. of these creatures start to. <laughs> Descend upon the view. Rogar is going to take a couple steps into the room. Warhammer out, shield out. All right. Um. Uh, the creature. Do, don't scroll up and roll 20, whatever you do. <laughs> yeah, Kyle is going to walk yeah. past the barricade, and uh, Kyle's mage hand is going to take a, a stick uh, from the barricade, start slapping it on the ground, kind of up away from us to the, the right. All right. Uh, with that, we will start our... Uh, let's roll for combat. Everybody give me initiative rolls, please. I'm into it. Ooh, natural 20 for 22. Natural 20 for 20. <laughs> nice. 18. 18 for Kyle? 18 for Kyle. And Logo with a 13. Right. Who do I not have? I got Logo. And... Logar. What did Logar get? Uh, what did Logar, Logar got a 22. Get? 22. All right. Uh, so two things happen immediately. Uh, as soon as Kyle starts banging the stick against the right-hand side of the wall, all of these uh, creatures immediately start focusing on that noise. Uh, they don't seem to notice... They don't seem to notice any of you anymore. Uh, Rogar, it is your go. Um... Times like the, this, I really wish I could delay. <laughs> it's not a 5e thing. Uh, I think he would just... I actually don't think he would know that Logo is even in the corner. Right? Because didn't he hide himself with his minor illusion? Yeah, I don't think you would notice where the, the gnome went, unfortunately. Yeah. I think he's just going to take a step up and over, but just ready an attack if one of these things comes near him, he's going to hit him with his Warhammer. But he's just going to wait. Alright. Uh, ready an attack. Uh... Yeah, that'll be it for him. Alright, Ovark. Okay. Um, Ovark will come through the barrier um, and will uh, perceive... Uh, Kyle, you're the one that's that's like tapping. Yep. Yep. I guess way away from Kyle. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tapping away from me, too. Right, right, right. 30 um, feet away from me. So, like, kind of like north, right. maximum distance yep. of telekinesis. So, you're like tapping yeah, it's, around. It's, like, it's main chance, uh, but yeah, it's yeah. over there. It's over there. Yeah, it's over here. Uh, uh, like playing so Marco you, Polo. Yes. Uh, he'll, he'll look and be like, that's a pretty good idea. Um, it does seem to be distracting them. And um, yeah, going first is, is just not a good thing. Um, I will cast a, the cantrip Thaumaturgy to just kind of also put a little bit of an echo where, where his uh, mage hand is tapping and just kind of make it like a little bit louder in that area. All right. Thaumaturgy is happening. Give it, give, it a little, give it a little rumble. Just like... Kyle, you're up. 
I'm gonna keep tapping, uh, but as I'm as I'm doing that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand behind Rogar. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, I'm gonna kind of sneak, kind of quietly move behind Rogar while I'm making a lot of tapping noises with my mage hand and my stick. All right. Uh, Logu. Logu will take the dodge for now. All right. All of the automatons line up to where the noise is happening in formation. And they sort of just it... are like just sitting there like they all sort of draw these short swords which appear to have uh, padding on them, but the padding has, like, started to, like, wear off. So the short swords have, like, the rusty, uh, dangerous-looking tips exposed, and they start sort of just... The front three start just poking at the location where the stick is. Uh, but they apparently... Yeah, none of them managed to hit the stick. They're just sort of, like... They kind of, like, hit an area near the stick, but they don't hit the stick itself. Guys, maybe we, maybe we can sneak past them. Oh, I think they're not very idea. smart. Shh, don't seem that bad. Get them, like you buy them. Rogar just turns over, looks over his shoulder and nods, but he's just, his attention's mostly focused there. I will follow you. Shh. All right. Rogar is in his still loudest in stage whisper. <laughs> it is still we're still in combat. Rogar, it is your turn. All right. So what else do we have in this room? Are those uh, are those doors? On you the find side? yourself in a hallway of doors. The only thing uh, there is uh, a door here, a door over to the west and east. There's a door over here. And there's a bunch of doors to the north. And the only thing that is not a door in this hallway is the seven automatons and this weird looking machine that you can't quite can't quite figure out what it is from this distance. It's like kind of a weird boxy machine. Yeah. Okay. I well, think we Rogar can, is we just can gonna... see decently well in here. There's a little bit of light. Yep. Uh you you look up and you can see that uh there's kind of like these weird, like little illumination patterns on the ceiling. Uh, and you also notice that there's, as you look up and look at that, you notice that there's actually like small holes drilled at regular, uh, there's small holes drilled in the wall at regular uh, intervals. So you said wall, but you were doing this. So I'm just making sure you didn't mean ceiling. Uh, right at the, right in the corner. Okay. Technically, Rogar... the, technically, the holes are in the wall, but right where the wall meets the ceiling. Gotcha. If if they were if those holes had like arrows in them, where would the arrows be pointing? Uh, Excellent question. If they were had arrows, then they would be pointed literally every fifteen feet, uh, facing okay. uh, east, east west. <laughs> Kyle's going to pretend like there are arrows in there, and he's going to move through the room accordingly. Like. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's still Rogar's turn. So. All right. All right. Rogar is just gonna kind of just slowly step in this direction, up by this uh, door over here, and just kind of look to see if anyone's following him. And he's going to uh, also ready an attack to hit something if one of these things comes near him. All right. Uh you. And that's it. You you move, and it seems like these things don't notice you at all. They are still focused on the whapping piece of wood. Uh, and it seems like they're going to try to hit it again next round. Uh, and at Rogar's turn, Ovark. Okay, seeing that, um, that Kyle has the distraction under control, uh, look around. It's like we lost someone. And not knowing that Logu has uh, illusioned himself into the corner there. Dang, that was fast. One down already. And um, I'm going to go up to this door. And just kind of uh, give it a give it a once over, give it a look, and I'm fine with using my action for perception if I need to. Yep, uh, rolling perception. Eleven. All right. Uh, this is a door that is cunningly made from woven driftwood. 
just dry wood that's kind of all sort of fit together like a puzzle piece to make a large door. There seems to be like a latch, but there doesn't seem to be any kind of like keyhole or anything like that. Okay, but it but it has a handle and a way of opening it. It just doesn't have a keyhole. Yep, it's just like there's a crude latch that you sort of just lift up okay. to open and close the door. I lift the latch. You lift the latch. I do. Lift the latch. I'm in the line of fire. It's fine. Yeah. You can, you can push <laughs> like, it. Open it and hide behind it. <laughs> uh, you, you open the door, exposing Rogar to the door, uh, whatever is in, in this room. But uh, there, nothing seems to happen. Uh, as you peek into the room, you see it is filled with uh, dry roots and vines. Can I shut the door? <laughs> And you shut the door quietly. That's the no, no I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I'm just kidding. I'm not shutting it. I'm just looking in like, oh, crap. Kyle. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep knocking around over there. I'm going to I'm going to move up. I'm staying. I'm staying quietly right behind Rogar the whole time. Still still knocking around with that stick in and, and amongst the, the automatons. All right. Uh, Logu. Um, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll create a new illusion here. All right. Actually, maybe I should dash. No, I want to keep an eye on the party, or I want to be with the party. So I'm gonna create a new illusion here. All right. <laughs> it looks like a moving bush. Like <laughs> stand up with a bush over my head. <laughs> <laughs> the world. Oh, hey, he's still here. Oh, wait. He's still here. All right. Uh, one of the automatons swings uh, with their short swords, shattering the branch uh, that is being bashed on the ground. Now, that doesn't really... You're still hitting the ground. You're just kind of hitting with half a branch at this point. Sounds uh, good. So it's still making noise. Um, and all the other automatons are now swinging at it, but they appear to be like in some weird formation where only three of them get to attack at a time. And so they're just sort of slashing nearby, but uh, that's basically all that happens this turn with them. Rogar, you're up again. <laughs> Rogar. Uh, he t turns and looks. Is that door still open? I forget if you said you, you were Wal joking when you closed it. Uh, yeah, Wally said uh, uh, Ovark just left it open. Okay. Not seeing anyone there, and everybody's still there. He's going to... I guess he's going to just take a... I don't know, just move up more. One, two, three, four, five, six for 30 feet. All right. And uh, again, just ready an attack if somebody, one of these guys comes after him. All right. That's Rogar Stern. Ovark. Uh, Ovark is going to... Um, since Rogar's seen what's in the room and this dragonborn barbarian's like, no, thank you, and continues up, Park's going to do the same. Like, yeah, probably not a good idea anyway. And he's just going to follow. Um, and I will take the, the dodge action and end my turn. All right. Kyle. Okay, well, if these automatons are still trying to hit this stick, Kyle is going to try to put the stick in like a, a chink in the armor on, on one of these guys. So either kind of in their, in their collar of their armor or uh, the picture that we have here looks like they're wearing helmets. If I can yep. put it in like the eye slit of, mm -hmm. of the armor or something like that, I'm just going to try to put the stick attached to one of the, just going like to put it in their helmet, and just like rattle it around. Yeah. <laughs> make it, make yeah. yeah. The, the intent is to get the other automatons to uh, engage in some friendly fire, but we'll see. All right. This is the way. Uh, and you can attempt to move as, if you wish to as well. Yeah, oh yeah, I gotta stay right behind Rogar. Yeah. All right. Logu. Same as before. <laughs> ah, I'm keeping up. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, you start bashing one of the armor uh, helmets and, uh, you know, right in the section where the helmet kind of meets the armor is the only real sort of joint you see. 
Uh, and the automatons start to gang up and start wildly starting to attack. Ooh. <laughs> That was in that 20. Yeah. Uh, the one that you have is the the three of the ones just sort of gang up on it and they all sort of like slam their short swords into its uh, various orifices and it falls over. And I gotta go back to... It falls over into pieces on the ground making clattering noises. And they continue to swing for a couple of seconds. I almost felt sorry for that one. Rogar. Rogar just turns and just grins at Kyle. Uh, <laughs> Thumbs up. And then he just he just whispers, "You tell me where to go, and I'll go." And he just continues to move up. Uh, two, three, four, five. Six. Same thing, ready and attack. All right. And that's it for him. All right. Uh, at this point, uh, I would say... Well, actually, let's, let's keep going. Let's, there's something else might happen here. So, Ovark. Um, Ovark will uh, move up... Uh, 30... Um, next to Rogar, and then and would like to cast Thaumaturgy again to instantaneously cause an unlocked door or window to fly open or slam shut. Um, oh, that would not be a good idea. Never mind. He thinks about it. He's like, oh, never mind. And it just takes a dodge action. All right. And then fly open was probably, would probably not be good. All right, Kyle. Uh, Kyle's going to try to find a stick and, and jam it on another one. Uh, you continue to do so. Yeah, Kyle's trying the stick trick again. Stick trick. All right. Grabbing a stick, jamming it in the, the collar of, of one of these automaton armors. All right. And moving up behind our, our big old dragonborn here. Logu. Uh, I'm going to move up. I'm not going to illusion this time. All right. Go right like here. I'm going to dash to get like there. All right. Actually, I'll go there. All right. Uh, let's just assume that we're going to spend the next couple turns doing the same thing. Uh, so at the end of the day, you have uh, one guy left. Uh, unless anybody else is, is planning to do anything else. It seems like this is a solution which will uh, apparently work on this situation that I did not consider when making this. Scenario. Yeah, I would like to high. I would like to quietly high five Kyle. All right. It, are we down to one? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll say you're gonna keep on doing this. For Kyle, a minutes. Kyle loudly high fives. All right. <laughs> uh, the one automaton which cannot attack just suddenly turns to you all and starts walking towards you. Uh, he's gonna move. It just slowly starts to walk towards the sound of the high five. Rogar. If, it's at, if it gets in range, yeah, he's. <laughs> uh, he could only move about uh, 10 feet away from you. Okay. Yeah, I think Rogar's pissed. He's just going to take a step forward and <laughs> attack it with his Warhammer. <laughs> All right. That's not so great. Uh, that's an eight. <laughs> uh, it just bounces off his armor, and it does not do anything. Uh, Ovark. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, Ovark's like, oh, shoot. I guess we're going to do this. I thought we got the way Scott's free on that. Um, he would like to cast Sacred Flame, which would be a dexterity DC 13 saving throw for the automaton. All right. Uh, failed. Okay, damage incoming. Uh, that'll be five points of radiant damage. Uh, this thing collapses into different parts. You can see as this thing falls down right next to you. It's made up of armor bits, little bits of mechanical uh, springs, wires, 
There's a weird little flash that looks like lightning, and this thing is basically have fallen to pieces on the floor. That was... High fives, Ovark. Yeah, that was cool. Um, this little glowy object that you uh, just so happened to mention, I would like to take a look at that. Uh, you see that there is a small red um, gem that seems to be in the chest cavity of the one that fell next to you. Uh, I'll pick it up. You pick it up. It feels slightly warm. Interesting. Should we collect these from the rest of them? Or maybe we just make a note of that and come back later. Don't know if they'll be needed or not, but we'll see. Uh, pocket. It's, um, now that we can talk freely, uh, let's go check out that machine. Yeah, Rogar was probably heading that way. Thing. Yeah, let's go over there. Uh, this appears to be a metal box with a stylized scale with coins on one side and assorted goods on the other. Uh, you can see that it is mostly, there's a glass front. It appears to be some sort of automated goods dispenser. Uh, there's not much <laughs> left. There, it, there's basically uh, a couple, there's basically a bunch of empty slots. And the one, the slots that are still full appear to be a healing potion, a much larger healing potion, a short sword, uh, a hat, and a potion that none of you recognize, and a question mark. Put my face on the glass and look really close. I want that. Which one? Thor? The potion that we don't potion? recognize. Do you recognize it? I do. I don't recognize it. Oh. It's a potion that we don't recognize. Oh. Um. You can is there see uh, some, anything uh, that shows? You can see some script beneath the potion you don't recognize that says 100 gold. Oh, my friend, you have expensive tastes. <laughs> That's way beyond my budget. I don't know. <laughs> piece, a piece of glass never stopped me. I will back all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. Uh, before I do, though, I will give Logu uh, guidance. <laughs> Whatever it is. It... You can do this. I think Rogar just stands over. right there with him. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold up my the blunt... the. Hilt of my dagger, and then I'll look at Rogar. Hey, can I borrow that? Yeah, Rogar just just grins. <laughs> and then he grabs the top of the hammer and hands the, the handle to him. Oh, you want, you want me to do it? I'd be more than happy to. Oh. All right. Bring me those potions. <laughs> Rogar steps forward, <laughs> puts the shield on his back, versatile two hands, this sucker, <laughs> smashes oh, man, the front of it as hard as he can. I'm looking at it like yeah. this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me an athletics check, please. Okay. I should have guidance to you. <laughs> 12 plus 5, 17. I didn't need it. Uh, you smash the front of this machine, and this... Your blow barely makes a mark in the front of it. Uh, there's this weird thrumming noise as you hear something in like behind the machine seemingly make this weird uh, kind of coughing noise as all of a sudden the machine starts to like sort of dim down and it seems to almost power down. Mm. Do I get the sense that if I did this again, it might make more progress? Or was that what? I mean, I gave it my a good. <laughs> you hit it pretty hard. Uh, yeah. yeah. You would have to maybe try something different in order to like get a different, you know. Um, going to reapproach. What's the price on the lo what's the lowest price on something? Uh, we've got the the mystery potion for a hundred gold. Uh, the lowest Let's price go. listed is the random apparently item with the question mark. Which is and ten, how much ten is gold, that? Ten gold. Um, I like bring out a pathetic pouch of coins. Um, I don't even know if I have two. I have, 
I don't have any gold. I spent it all. I spent all mine too. <laughs> um. Well then. Um. Sorry, it does not look like any of us will be getting anything today. Maybe. Perhaps we can find some gold. It seems that these are a place here for us to use, but. Kyle attempts to manifest a mage hand inside the vending machine. Uh, you are able to manifest a mage hand inside the vending machine. Kyle Best takes the can. mystery potion out of the slot it is in. Uh, you take the mystery potion out of the slot that it's in. Kyle uh, uh, attempts to uh, wriggle the mage hand back out of the machine. Uh, you realize that there's no, there's no exit point. When when the flap goes up, it blocks that. Is that, there's, is there, that yeah, there's, there, yeah, there's a flap that is blocking the bottom. <laughs> That's how uh, they always get you. People can are I always push, losing their hand in those things. Can I push the flap like half open? Uh, you try to push we, the we flap half it. open. Uh, give me a give me a Dexter. Actually, what would this be? Um, if Slide you have. Uh, let me just get straight up dexterity for this. Persuasion check. <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on. I can do this. 16. Yeah, you managed to... You, you pause for a second in horror as you realize you might have gotten your hands stuck, but you quickly just wriggle it free. It doesn't seem like there's any easy way of getting this thing to open up from the outside. Ah! So he didn't get it. It is. It's still there. It's, it's on the bottom. It's but it's sitting on the. It's sitting on the bottom of the machine. But it's there's no. There's obviously there's an obvious thing on the bottom where like it, whatever you buy pops out. But it's just you know. Hmm. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll kick it in anger. All right. Well, no Kyle. Kyle takes the cork off of the mystery potion and pours it on the bottom of the vending machine. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah, that would work. It's not, it's not liquid tight, so it starts to slowly drip. Does anyone got a bottle? Drip anyone drip. have a bottle? Uh, anyone it got a bottle? To drip on the bottom of the, uh, the vending machine thing. One second, I gotta, I gotta turn off an alarm. I'll be right back. Out of water skin, but that's all I have. I'm gonna grab no, water, I'll be right back. We might need that water. We might need that water. <laughs> I think you're muted, Wally. Said so that mage hand. I gotta get one of those. It's the greatest candy. It's so good. It's so, it's so good. good. That's so awesome. I'll be right back. Okay. Doing the big brain plays. Uh, <laughs> each time you said you did something, I was like, yep. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Apologies, that was... <laughs> oh, good. That happened. Yeah, so I guess the next point is if anybody happens to have an empty bottle in their inventory. <laughs> I just have my water skin. It's not empty. So there's I'm there saying. are drips coming out of the vending machine and dripping on the floor of the room we're in? Is that it's, what's going on? It's dripping from the little uh, flap. And so it's dripping into the... Uh, holding area where the the stuff is supposed to drop down whatever you okay, call it, like but, a little, so, little little bin on the bottom that's kind of cushions the fall where it's sort okay. of like a ramp edge so it's sort of dripping into the center of that okay so so we could put one of our fingers and touch the weird liquid that's in the yes yeah the bottom of the vending machine certainly can all right uh kyle is just going to kind of look around the party see if anyone sees this possibility of of kind of sampling the the drips that are coming out. I'm not Let sure. me. I'm not sure Rogar would put that together. Um. Uh, can I like scoop some of the the goo? Yep. I will. While he's doing that, I'll pat him on the shoulder and give him guidance again, just to make sure he's got it. Um, I got his ability check, so so you might be. Are you trained? What uh, what kind of skills do you got? Do you have anything in terms of um, alchemy kits or 
arcana, anything like that? Cooking. Cooking, cooking utensils. <laughs> uh, yeah, give me a cooking utensils roll with uh, wisdom. Um, or intelligence. Roll, what, intelligence or wisdom, whichever's higher. They are the same. I'm just going to roll this perception as if it... I got 20. Ah, very good. Because it's the same. Oh. In your cooking experience, do you feel that this is almost like a like a recipe that would in, increase the volume of something? There's mine all... Ah, mm. This is good. That's it? This is good? <laughs> yes, this could be a useful potion if we can get it out of there. But unfortunately, we can't. And, uh... Into I the think there's no the... salvaging it. Perhaps this potion... This, the magic of this potion will enlarge us. Make us bigger. Not anymore. It's... It continues spilled to, all over the machine. It continues to drip very slowly into the bin. And and the bin itself is watertight. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of collecting on the bottom. Um, I I do have a uh, a glass vial, so I like just like hold it underneath and just start collecting the little bits while we're waiting to figure out what we're doing. Okay, there you go. Yeah, let's try to try to get all of it. Bit by bit, it very slowly, drop by <laughs> drop, starts to slow fill up the vial. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Do you have more vials? We can slowly get some tiny healing potions going. I only bought one vial. That's all I had gold for. Fair enough. We should probably <laughs> leave. The vials are like like tiny things, probably too. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> I think my burglar's kit comes with vials, but vials of oil, a no, flask. Okay. Oh, well, uh, it's like the little. If we if we come back later, I think there will be a bin full of uh, enlargement potion here. Yeah, if you uh, if yeah. you do get the idea that you can just sort of prop up the vial to sort of have it filled. Okay. It it wasn't yeah. like a it wasn't like an overly large potion. Uh, okay. So it's just like it, if you, I'll do that. Yeah. We can we'll get, come back we, in. You, it's probably yes, going to take. My curiosity has been sated. I know what the potion is. I don't care anymore. I just wanted to know what it did. Now that we know, this is, yes. I'll leave the vial there and be like, um, perhaps we should get on with it then. Yeah, now I'm curious about these doors. Yeah, the other, the other stuff in the room, that's really all there is, right? Doors? Yeah, yep, doors. Uh, there's still the automaton who's walking against the wall, uh, slowly wearing away its arms and feet as it just continues to walk into the wall. That one's broken. It's be broken, but it is the only one still left standing. This, I think I understand what you're getting at. Too. <laughs> they um, all may have had colorful gems. Dragon person, I need your arm once more. <laughs> Just kind of scowls and follows Logu. <laughs> <laughs> Let us collect the shiny objects within the corpses of these automatons and let us break down this one so that we may collect its shininess as well. Uh, you look through the cor uh, well, not corpses. You look through the uh, robotic remains of these automatons and it looks like only three of them had uh, gems that weren't destroyed when they were uh, disassembled. So you were able to okay. grab those from the bits of debris left over. And so potentially there's another one in this other automaton, right? Ah, uh, potentially, yes. Yeah. Rogar just tries to smash it to pieces. <laughs> yeah, I You're mean, doing great. You, you easily are able to do so. Yeah. yeah. So you, Subtlety is not what he does. <laughs> You, you crack open this creature's torso and are able to retrieve uh, another small red uh, glowing gem. Huh. I have I one. How I many do you have? Four? Uh, you have four in total now. I'm sorry, you have five in total now. Rogar will take one. He doesn't care. <laughs> he just figures everyone should have one. Hey, one for each of us. What are the what are the colors represented? 
Uh, they are all glowing uh, red, softly. I want the red one. Yes, but have you seen the red one? That's This one is much nicer. You may take the red one, but I will be taking the red one. Right. Mark feels like he's starting to figure uh, Logu out a little bit. Um, these, uh, these doors that we're looking at, um, on the map, they all look different. Is there, um, in reality, are they all, do they all look the same? Are they, uh, old wooden, uh, decrepit doors like the one that we opened earlier? Or are they all different? Uh, they are all different. You opened yeah. the door that looks like, uh, it's made out of driftwood. Uh, yeah. and the other ones all are made of either wood or metal, depending on the door. We open when we opened the one of driftwood. There was like wooden pieces in there or something. When it like um, the entirety of the like room that. was filled with uh, dried uh, roots and vines. Uh, roots and vines. Interesting. Um, oh, imagine what a fire could do in there. Hmm. I was just saying. I was just saying. It's not a bad idea. Um, I I want to open this door. Uh, you glance, you look at a door that appears to be uh, the door of, like, perhaps an inn or tavern or something like that. Uh, Perfect. So, yeah, you, On the way out. <laughs> you, yeah, the door seems to have a simple uh, uh, wooden doorknob, and you turn it, and you hear it click, and you open it up. Uh, inside, actually, reveal area, please. Uh, inside, you can see a <laughs> crackling fire, and you can see five small uh, makeshift beds. All right. Well, this is good when we get tired. We're going to need to find some food, though. Or one of the beds small-sized. <laughs> <laughs> <That'd be great. laughs> oh, no, all of the beds are small-sized. All oh. small size? Yeah. Uh they're mm -hmm. you see that they're they're kind of just made out of uh sort of like, you know, bundles of uh grasses, uh sort of like uh set up underneath like bed rolls. This one um, appears to be the coziest. Kyle attempts to move one bed closer to another bed to make it normal size. Oh, later. you're, you're going to put two beds together? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, just, are you just That's gonna, the twin <laughs> to queen conversion. All right, the, the, the two nearest ones then, I guess? Sure, yeah. All right, you put them together. It, it's not important, I hope. <laughs> and you kind of set them up so it's like a double bed, so it is sort of the size of a normal bed now. All right, I go to high five, Logu. All right, we got our beds. Yeah. <laughs> Rogar, you may have the second most comfortable bed. The one right next to me. <laughs> Rogar walks out of the room. <laughs> wait, wait, where are you going? <laughs> He's just going to go start going with this door uh, down here. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, wait, let's you're, hope you're all the power. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> let's uh, hope that we don't have to door. stay that long. I got a cool uh, bed if if we're around here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> like we just we like? just entered Boy Scout camp. <laughs> <laughs> Plus we got our uh, red gems and everything. This is great. Uh, uh, red gems. We've got some growth potion that's brewing over there. <laughs> <laughs> a great time. <laughs> yeah, we're brewing a potion. <laughs> uh, this uh, Rogar. There seems to be a bronze door. With again, it doesn't seem to have a lock on it, just seems to have just a latch. He just takes his war hammer and picks up the latch with it if he can. Yep, you can kind of finagle it and just pushes it open. Uh, you push the door open within, it's nothing but darkness. <sighs> Kyle picks up a stick and uses <laughs> light to make the stick full of light and then walks up to the doorway. All right. You do so. The light does not seem to penetrate into the darkness past the door. Kyle sticks the stick that's glowing into the doorway. Uh, past the, dark, the threshold. The darkness envelops the stick. 
Oh, Kyle that is... takes the stick back out. Uh, the stick that returns, and it's it's still lit up. I don't know what to do about this one, guys. Um, I would like to, if we can hang out for ten minutes, I'd like to ritual cast uh, detect magic. Well, it's it's There's clearly magical. magical. <laughs> <laughs> I um, want to know what's in there. But if I can sense something within 30 feet of me, then maybe that will help. You bring Big up Walker. an interesting point. Try. Uh, yeah, so if we're, if we're cool with um, 10 minutes of ritual casting, I would like to do that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm fine with that. We could also just check the other doors in the meantime. Take a nap. I'll, I'll yell into the darkness. Hello! And then jump Probably. behind Rogar. <laughs> uh, nothing happens. Sounds about right. Sure, <laughs> us. All right. Seems safe. Did I mention how flammable that other room looked, though? There is fire in the uh, in the camp room. Did. Yeah, yeah, we can make that happen for sure. Ovark's trying not to laugh as he's like concentrating on this ritual <laughs> casting. Don't, don't let us keep you. Um, I don't think starting a forest fire in one room is going to help us see in the magical dark room, though. No, no, it's a completely unrelated issue. But it'd be fun, yeah. Right. Oh, man, Not I don't opposed. think there's an adult in this group. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Rogar keeps looking like he just wants to walk yeah, into the darkness. Yeah, I'm, I'm passing ten minutes quite happily. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's fine. We could press forward if you guys want. Ten minutes pass. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. And you learn its school, if any. Um, and I would like to stand at the door. All right. Uh, you and glance in. Uh, incredibly powerful evocation magic is just everywhere in the room. Shut the door. <laughs> there is something in there that is going to blow up. It's evocation really? magic. It's, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's, it's uh, fire I'm, and explosives. And, I am uh, very familiar with fire and explosives, actually. Yes, um, but yeah, the entire room, it just radiates with this. How do we make um, that happen? <laughs> Ask your <know>. friend. <laughs> um, Rogar grabs a, one of the helmets or, or uh, one of the torsos of the automaton. Ovark moves the heck out of the way. Uh, Logi, you may want to step back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and just from 10 feet away, chucks it into the, into the room. Uh, it disappears into the darkness. You hear a clattering noise, and that is it. Huh. Wait, hold on. About one of these. Can I grab like a, a torch from the campfire? Uh, the campfire you quickly realize produces light, but no actual heat. This is fake. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually have a torch in my. I have a candle. I have a torch if you want one. There you go. There we go. Candle will do it. Yeah. I don't think we're going to be able to see in there, but maybe the... I see what you're saying, though. Maybe the fire will trigger something. Well, yeah, if it explodes, then we need to light the, the fuse. Mm. So we do I'll a candle. stand the back as a fire approaches the doorway. Go. Yeah. Go. I'm already behind the corner. <laughs> I, think, I think a torch would be more reliable. All right. <laughs> Uh, hand me that yeah. torch, I'll light it. Is anybody want gonna... to? Rogar lights. I mean, he was probably already. Yeah. Candles just gonna make it just a, a, mage hand, a mage hand taps uh, Rogar on the shoulder. He goes, eh? Huh? Oh. A mage hand, mage <laughs> hand opens up, him. palms yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, he hands it to him. <laughs> mage hand grabs the torch and uh, proceeds straight down into the doorway. Ah, uh, the torch this disappears into the darkness. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mage hand comes back out, hands it back to the the dragonborn. 
didn't say I always know what these effects are. Maybe I could be wrong. It's just... Nothing in this place is real. Uh, I want to push the button, button guys. I really fake. want to push the button. <laughs> uh, let's try a different door, perhaps. Yeah, let's yes, try a good, different good door. plan. Thanks again to all the players. I hope you all check out their YouTube channels. Folks, I am Wally DM. I have a YouTube channel focused on puzzles and traps and a book on Drive to RPG, the Journal of Puzzle Encounters. Hey, I'm Jake from J&J Tabletop. My friend Josh and I started a YouTube channel dedicated to Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop role playing games in general. And our goal is to help you unlock what works best for you and your games at your specific table, because there's more than one way to play this game. Hey, I'm Silly Sam. I make D&D videos on YouTube. Hey, I'm Brent. I run a channel called Goobertown Hobbies. It's a mini painting channel. That's Goobertown Hobbies for all your mini painting needs. And I am also on a podcast called The 20-Sided Realms, which is an RPG podcast, The 20-Sided Realms.